Uh, David, why become a Christian? So, um, what do you think? Why should someone become a Christian, Anthony? Yeah, well, the obvious answer is because it's true, and so the follow-up would be, how do we know that it's true? And there are a number of ways a person can go uh, about arguing for this. Uh, first, I'd just say, since I just gave my testimony, uh, my personal persuasion of the truth of Christianity was that I recognized that it spoke the truth about my own heart, the reality of my sin, and brought conviction and saw the necessity of the atonement of Christ by virtue of God's law, which is written not only in Scripture but in uh, my conscience. And so uh, those sorts of things rang true to me. That, that obviously isn't the only thing that we would say. We believe there is objective public evidence for the truth of Christianity, uh, but I don't think that's insignificant simply because uh, you know it's not the same sort of thing most people are looking for when they think of evidence. Uh, but as, as far as evidence goes, and, and you've done this uh, numerous times, uh, and, and we'll probably want to chime in on this, but we would point to the reality of Christ's uh, crucifixion and resurrection. Uh, the crucifixion, of course, the, the best attested and most widely acknowledged historical fact about Jesus, not even uh, questioned except by fringe scholars like uh, um, uh, what's his name? I can't even think of his name. He's such a fringe scholar. <laughs> uh, uh, Richard Carrier. In any case, um, uh, yeah, so the crucifixion of Christ is uh, widely attested, uh, firmly entrenched in historical fact. And so the, the question really only is, did Jesus actually rise from the dead? A fact predicted in the Old Testament, predicted by Jesus, and uh, we would say attested not only through uh, multiple witnesses in the New Testament, uh, witnesses who are will, willing to seal their testimony with their blood, something you wouldn't expect when somebody is talking about an empirical uh, fact, right? I mean, you could have people that might die for an ideology that they're persuaded is true, but no person's going to willingly lay down their life for something they claim to have seen, but no, they didn't see. And so we at least know that the authors of the New Testament believed that they witnessed the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. They saw him in his glorified, resurrected body. And uh, so uh, at that point, I mean, the question becomes, were they simply deceived or uh, were they in fact telling the truth? And the deception idea simply doesn't work. Uh, I mean, there, there are any number of ways a person might claim they were deceived. The most popular would be to say something like they saw a hallucination. Uh, but the problem with that is you have people, uh, if the disciples were uh, going to have hallucinations, then they're not likely going to have hallucinations of something that doesn't comport with their background beliefs. And, and the background beliefs of the disciples wasn't that the Messiah would die and rise again uh, three days later. They actually expected the resurrection to be something that took place at the end of the age, and the Messiah was uh, somebody who was going to come and conquer the Romans and establish Jewish hegemony and so forth. Uh, so a hallucination of Christ risen uh, would have been contrary to all expectations. Uh, as well, you have the fact that uh, the, the resurrection of Christ was witnessed by not only one person, not only on one occasion, but by multiple people on multiple occasions. So, I mean, there, there's just a, a wealth of information, uh, evidentially, that points to the reality of uh, Christ's resurrection. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't even say that's uh, all there is to the case that could be made for Christianity. Uh, there's, there's a lot more that could be said, but... Uh, that, that would be for starters.